hi guys welcome back to the channel mark here today we are back with another video and today we're gonna look at something that you basically use or see daily on every website we're gonna look at a password verifier and uh, before we move forward i just want to um request you to just take a simple second just a slick second like this just to go down in the video smash the like button comment down below and share this video and uh, if you're new here consider subscribing and uh, if you're a returning subscriber please go ahead and share this video to your new friends and i'm gonna add the uh, code in the repository and you will be free to use it on your resume so without further ado let's get into the video So what we're looking at over here is a simple task that is asking you as a software developer who is creating software for a shopping site that requires users to create their own passwords. Your software requires that the users, that the users passwords meet the following. Um, the password should be at least eight characters long. It should be, it should contain at least one uppercase and at least one lowercase. The password should have at least one digit. Um, write a program with the main class named password verifier. The program should display the following prompt, enter password, and then the user is going to enter their password. Then um, we go all through all the way here. valid password and um where was that okay if the string is a valid password the program should display valid password otherwise it should display invalid password then they go ahead and they show you the simple task um the simple program running over there so uh what we're gonna do real quick over here what i did is just to create a folder here and then i uh, added my java my password verifier class so now let's uh, run through over this and then see what's going on so now i have a public class which is like the basics the blueprint of our software and the next thing that i'm gonna do is um to create the main function because java is always looking the jvm is always looking for this main function and um And um, the next thing I'm going to do is to use the scanner class, scanner input, input is got to new, input, okay, and then in here, you can say system dot in. So now I'll go ahead and import this. So what this does is that it enables uh, you, the user, to enter data through the terminal. So that's why... Uh, we're using the system.in and the scanner class. So now to move forward, now we can go ahead and ask the user to enter enter password. I'm gonna leave a space there. Now that we have access to this, um, what we're gonna do is to create a string over here, and then name it response. Is equal to input input dot next line so now as you saw me typing over there it was suggesting a bunch of stuff that can be appended to the input so now quick thing when you're using a string you're always going to use the next line the next line will be able to grab strings that are entered by the user if you want to grab doubles then it will be next double for integers it will be next integer and so on and so forth so now over here we have access to whatever the user is going to enter the next thing is to use some logic and figure out if each character within the string that the user has entered is satisfying whatever uh, we need over here now to do that what we're gonna do real quick 
is to first of all we need to check if the password or the string has a digit what we're gonna do is to declare a boolean as digit okay has digit and then assign it to false initially it's going to be assigned to false and then what i'm going to do real quick i'm just going to copy this three times and then has um what else do we need has lowercase come on has lowercase and then has uppercase now that we have those boolean variables i'm going to show you how uh why we need this okay now before we move forward to the next step i'm going to ask you to just take a simple second and smash the like button comment down below and um because i'm pretty sure this um same project has so many ways to go about okay but uh, i'm going to show you the simple way and if you feel like this was the simplest way to figure this out, because this is a very common project that they ask in coding interviews and, um, you know, when you're asking for a job and, you know, whatnot. So if you know how to manipulate characters and whatnot, then you'll be good. OK, so now let's move forward. All right. And now we have access to the string that the user is going to enter. What we're going to do real quick over here. Um, I have the option to break this into another to create my logic into from you know another uh, function but since you know um, this is uh, for tutorials and stuff I'm just gonna keep it in the same function okay so now the next thing we're gonna say is if if this response okay response response dot length the first thing that we're doing here is we're trying to check because the first check the first priority is um the first priority is to find out if this the string is eight characters or more without that other than that we're just gonna toss it out okay okay so that's the first first thing that we're gonna do so now if it passes all right if it passes let me go ahead and comment this out um check if string is eight or more characters okay now if it passes then we can go ahead and now start looping through the string okay so if uh i'm sorry um four now that we're looking through the string for um, index is equal to zero and index is less than the response.length because this is now the length of the string and then increment that then now we're inside the loop okay so when we get inside the loop now we are trying to check for each character okay we have access to the string that the user has entered we checked that um if the string is greater than eight all right we've checked for that and now after we've checked for that and the string is greater than eight now we are inside the loop and we're checking for each each um each character okay so now um not to forget we'll you know um later on okay let's first do one thing at a go so now let's check this so to check for each each character what we're gonna do i'm gonna say that if the character dot is let's say if let's first check for its if it's a digit if the character is a digit all right and then in here this is where the character goes the character that we're trying to check for so now this is a built-in function this is um i mean a keyword for character to check for character this is how you check for if a character is a digit and whatever you pass in here let's say um 
uh, a okay this is how you would check for if a is a digit all right but for now we want to check for this string in um the string inside um, i mean the character inside the string and how we do that is response dot character at okay so this response okay dot character at is representing the single character within the string i hope that makes sense so now if that has if that that's a, dig a digit then we're going to say assign the has digit to true okay else if um what are we checking for this time round has lower okay if character dot is lower is lowercase okay and then we're going to do the same thing grab this drop it in there and then has lower sign it to true move forward to the next one else if so another thing you can do since these are just one liners you can uh you may as well just ignore the um mustache brackets okay so if um let's say character that is um uppercase this time around okay yeah, you can decide to ignore that it doesn't really matter so the, the in most cases the only time that you use the brackets is when you have multiple lines within the if block but i'm gonna keep that because you know uh, for, you know beginners and people that may not have an idea to avoid even less confusion there we are now we've checked for every single character and we are assigning these to true now that we have access to all that what we can do now is that we can say that um if um let's see if um let's see so um here actually what i'm gonna do so we're gonna say that if um has digit and we're trying to check for if all these are true okay and has lowercase and has uppercase then come on then we can shout that that is a valid password okay we don't need this and then else we can shout again so if any of those are not fulfilled if any of those is false then we assign wrong password but now take a look there's one thing that i'm gonna show you here but let's first test this out okay i'm gonna show you something that i'm seeing over here so if we run this run um this method okay now we can go ahead and enter the password. Obviously, this password is going to pass. So, okay, one thing that we're going to fix here, because it looks like it's printing on the next line. So now, to keep it on the same line, you just take out the LN, okay? Now, let's rerun that. Paste that in there. And then that's a valid password. 
Okay, let's test it out with a uh, um, a password that has only small letters, and then that's an invalid password. Okay, and then um, let me show you something that I'm seeing here. So now we are checking for. Okay, let's first um test that out. Run. Let's test that. Okay. So now, do you notice something? So um, I'm trying to write a shorter password that verifies all this and we see what happens. So let's see. How many characters are those? I believe they are less than. Let's keep them less than. Come on. Let's do that. And that. Let's see what happens. Good. So now, if you take a look over here, this function, I'm sure um, you would be wondering why we would not, we, we we wouldn't care to write an else statement here to check for if it is less than. Remember, if it is greater than, okay, all those are going to be checked for. I mean, the characters are going to be checked for in here as priorities, okay? And then this is where all the logic is pretty much solved from. Anything else that does not satisfy satisfy these arguments or these um, tasks, it's going to be invalid. Okay? So since everything that is true is in here, what everything else is going to be invalid. All right? I hope that makes sense. So first of all, when you're looking at when you look at the positive side of it okay this is the positive side of it everything in here satisfies to be a valid password what does that mean it means that anything else regardless if you write a password that is seven um seven characters long and it has capital letters and whatever it's not gonna pass because the only true um, arguments that are fulfilled for a password to be valid are in here. And those must be, it being eight characters or more, has a digit, has a lowercase, or has uppercase. I hope that makes sense, all right? Whatever is left will not pass, okay? So I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to share this on the um github on github and the source code will be available for you to download and show onto your resume or show to your potential employers that you know what it means when it comes to security okay you can play around with this again in javascript or python and it's going to be the same logic everything will be the same all right i hope you enjoyed this video and um, be sure to like the video and comment down below and i hope to see you in the next video happy coding bye bye